Today we're going to have our scripture reading from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 16 and it reads as follows. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. The part of the scripture that we're going to spend time on today is the second part of that verse that says, For you are the temple of the living God. Father, in the wonderful name of our Lord, who is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we glorify your name and, and grateful, Father, that you have made us the partakers of the kingdom of God. You have allowed us, Father God, to be able to speak about the most precious name, the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank you, Father God, that your word is living, your word is powerful, your word is able to change anyone's life that allows himself or herself to be touched by your word. Father God, we cannot make another day a prosperous day without being guided by your word. Thank you, Father God, that in this moment you will reveal your word to us so that it can guide us so that we will be able to have a peaceful and a righteous life. We ask all of that and we are so grateful because we know that it is all done because you promised us in your will that everything that we ask and we believe that it is done, it is done already. All in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Um, without wasting much time, I would like us to to look first at what is the temple and how was the temple built. The temple that the Israelites worship God at or in those days was coming from God himself. God gave the people that were going to build the temple, the structure, the design, and the way, the plan in which they're going to build this temple. It was not their decision to build a certain kind of a temple, that kind of a temple. It was godly given, directly coming from heaven. The mandate was directly coming from heaven. Now, in the temple, we will recall that there were three sections which God allowed or told them to, to build according to the heavenly structure of the temple in the New Jerusalem. God said to them, they must build a temple that will have the outer court, the holy place and the holy of holies. These three places were all, all of them made the temple, but they had different functions, different responsibilities. So that meant different people, people could enter those different three sections of the temple because they all had different responsibilities, which I'm not going to go into today, but I might touch a little bit on that. But we will notice that because of different responsibilities, that also automatically meant different people will enter in different sections. The first section or the first part of the temple was called uh, the outer court. Now in the outer court, every first thing that you must notice or realize that everyone could see the outer court. Everyone was passing by the road. Everyone could touch outer court because they could come inside and everyone can walk and stay and worship in the outer court okay secondly the second part was the holy place now in the holy place not everyone and anyone could enter the other thing that you will notice is that 
the more we go inside the temple, the more restricted it becomes. The more, the less people are allowed to go inside. Because in the first part, everyone could go in. But in the second part, only the people or the tribe of Levite could come in. I'm not going to go deep or talk about the tribe of, of, of Levites. But we'll, in, in, in brief, you can say in our days, it, it was more like pastors or Abbe Fundis. But it was the, they were the people that could carry some spiritual rituals and matters and ceremonies. They were the same people that were entrusted by God to keep and understand the laws of the kingdom of heaven or kingdom of Israel. They had so much information. They had so much knowledge about spiritual matters. The third part of the third section of the temple, it was called the Holy of Holies. Now, in the Holy of Holies, not anyone could enter. It was, in fact, it was only one person that was allowed to go inside there. Even that person could not go any time as you wish. He was allowed to go once per year. And that person was called the High Priest. Now, it's very important to understand and to recall that the High Priest was simply a type of Christ because only Christ could enter or only Christ is the Most High Priest. The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews that for we do not have a High Priest who does not understand our feelings, who cannot be compassionate, compassionate to our infirmities, who don't have a High Priest who is clueless about our daily struggle. But we have a high priest who in all points was tested, just like us. So in other words, Jesus is the most high priest. So the entrance or the entering of the high priest into the temple was simply a type of Christ was signifying that only God could enter into the most high, high, high place, into the, high, uh, into the Holy of Holies. Now, when we see this verse, it's very important for us to look into this verse with the understanding of what and where was the original temple coming from. You will recall that when we spoke about a man, we said a man is a spirit, a man has a soul, and man lives, is living inside the body. In other words, the man is, tri is a tripartite. He has three sections. Any man. The first part is the body, which anyone and everyone can see. Everyone can touch. Everyone can feel. The second part is the soul. Not everyone can see your soul. Not everything can enter into your soul. For instance, you can eat food, it will go into your body. Enhance and give health into your body or kill your body. But it cannot touch your soul, the food that you can eat. Doesn't matter how much food you want to eat or how, many, how much water or cold drinks or coffee you can drink, it can never touch your soul. That's the second part. So not everything. If you want to think differently, you have to feed yourself with information and that information will go into your soul and then you will think differently. You don't think differently because of your body. When you read anything, it doesn't go into your body, it doesn't go to your, to your, to your feet or to your head or to your eyes. No, it goes into your soul. Now, remember, when I say it goes to your soul, it's very important to recall that the soul is that part of you that has emotions, that has the thoughts 
it has the it has heart it has it, it it has a personality is that part of you that when you're talking about the character it's in the soul when you're talking about um emotions feelings they're in the soul when you're talking about the willpower how you decide the reason or the, the ability of you deciding or to stand, stand, stand strong or to be weak it's all in your soul so when you uh, even your mind is in the soul so now when you read or you study anything it goes automatically into your mind so it means it goes into your soul remember the book of uh, Romans chapter 12 verse, 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 verse 2 it says for we must renew our mind if you want to be able to to please God or to bring the, 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 the right service which is expected and acceptable to God, we must make sure that we spend time in, in renewing our mind. In other words, renewing our, our soul. Okay? Now, the third part is the spirit, which is where the living God stays. Now, in us, the spirit as we said as we spoke about the holy of holies it's very important to understand that the holy of holies only one man or person could enter so also in the spirit which is equivalent to the to the most holy place only one person can enter there and that is jesus himself no one else can enter even the devil cannot enter into your spirit you can try to mess up with your mind which is your soul you can try to mess up with your body but only god has access into your spirit that's the most holy place now in the spirit that's where we find things such as conscious that's where we find things like intuition in other words you are able to know things without knowing why you know them and how you know them you are able to sense things that are beyond your soul or your mind. You are able to know things that are beyond. You haven't seen them with your physical eye, which is your body. You, you, for some reason, you just know that is wrong. Now, those things are in the spirit. And that's where God dwells. Remember, the flesh also has its own part it has that's where you find the blood the flesh and the organs of the body they are in the flesh and in this in the soul we find uh, we find um, emotions we find the willpower we found character even personality in the spirit that's where you find intuition we found conscious and it's also a thirdly is a dwelling place of the most high of God. Now, it's very important for us, Bazarone, to know that whenever we sin or we do things that are not according to the will of God, they do not they cannot infect your spirit, but they can affect what happens to your spirit in the long run. In other words, just like you would have a relative or a friend who might have been infected with a certain disease, that disease does not infect you or it does not infect you, but it affects you because in, in, it infected your loved ones. So the same is applicable to this case. The spirit cannot be infected by sin. That's why the Bible says, those that are born of God cannot sin. In other words, the part of you that is born of God is a spirit, it's not a soul. When you become born again, what actually happens is your spirit becomes regenerated. In other words, it, it becomes alive again. It, it, comes, it becomes activated. All along it has been dead, as if it doesn't exist. So now when you become born again, that part of the of your body or of you becomes alive, it becomes active, it becomes alive, it becomes regenerated. 
So only God can access and his weight can access that part. Nothing else, no one else. So in other words, when God gives us righteousness, holiness, and anything that he wants to give us, he gives those things and place them inside our spirit, not in our soul, not in our bodies. So it's very important for us to know that because the devil will, 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 will lie all the time and make us to think that because we have sinned or you have missed the mark yesterday, you are not holy anymore. You are still holy because your, your spirit cannot be affected by anything else. When God made you or brought you to life, life, life again, you became born again. He sealed that part with the Holy Spirit as a guarantee so that nothing can mess around with that part or that section. But it does not mean that when you sin, your soul won't be affected. Your, your body won't be affected or infected. Those two can be infected because remember your soul is not born again. Your, 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 your body is not born again. But they are bought by the price. In other words, they belong to God. They might not be born again yet, but the Bible promises and says, promise, it, says it says, for we must not be worried or troubled about things that you go through on this earth. Because when he arrives, Jesus Christ, when he comes back, we shall be like him. We shall be like him. We shall be changed in the twinkling of an eye. We're going to be given a new body. A body that is not made up from the ground of the earth. But you're going to have the same spirit. God has done so much in us in such a way that even when he comes back, there's little or nothing is going to do to our soul because he has given us everything. The Bible says, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. In other words, every blessing that we want is in our soul. When you need healing, you don't have to go to some pastor in Nigeria or Germany or Zimbabwe. It is all in you. Just get in touch with your spirit. Align your body and your soul to what the spirit has. So that what is in the spirit can be transferred into your soul and transferred into your body. Everything is in us. Everything. There's nothing that we lack. It's very important that we get to know what is in the spirit and how our spirit functions. The Bible says, those that worship God must worship him in truth and in spirit. Because God is a spirit. You cannot worship God and God be satisfied when you completely satisfy when you worship him with your soul and your body. They need to worship God, yes. But there's only one part that when you worship God, God will be very happy and pleased. Is that part is the spirit. So it becomes very, very vital, brothers and sisters, for us to understand that. When you're talking about healing, it's all in the spirit. When you're talking about guidance, or we're talking about right righteousness, it's all in the soul, in the spirit. When you're talking about holiness, it's all in the spirit. It's there. Jesus Christ did it all once and once and for all. The part of our lives that are not holy, righteous, yes, right, uh, and righteous yet, that will be the, our soul which needs to be renewed every day, and the body, which needs to follow the, the soul. I am not going to talk much about that subject. We have already dealt with it previously, where we learned that everything must come from the spirit, soul, and body. Because if we are led by the flesh, which is the body, then automatically your spirit will be lost, your spirit will be suppressed 
So the things that are in the spirit will not come up, will not, you won't even know that they exist because you are led by the flesh. The right sequence of life that God designed was everything must be coming from the spirit, the soul must agree with the spirit, which is your mind, and then the body will follow, not the other way around. Now, I just wanted to share that part when it comes to this verse that tells us that our body, that our body is a temple of the living God. In other words, even if you meet someone who is crippled outside, that person is not crippled in the spirit. In the spirit, he's full. He's like you. As long as that person is born again, as long as that person has accepted Jesus Christ as his or her, her, her Lord and Savior. I will end our sharing today and that part in Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you.